Hi, my name is Steve Harris and welcome to Thinkation. You know, today we're celebrating the amazing life and times of my brother, my friend, a great guy, Dr. Ubong King. And I know that Ubong is totally, totally present here with us, even as we celebrate his life. Um, and today, you know, I've been given the privilege to speak to you, you know, just for a couple of minutes about, you know, the theme, how you can dare to fly. You know, Ubon King dared us to do a lot of amazing things. You remember that he would always say that the only way to get out of trouble is to get into trouble. You remember that. <laughs> So today I'd like to talk about how many of us as Davids can defeat the Goliaths in our industry. So you know, Nigeria is pretty hard, you know, and all of us are pretty much like Davids and we're doing the very best that we can to, you know, defeat the Goliaths in our industries. Um, my thought today is actually taken from scripture, so many of us are very familiar with the story of David and Goliath, and I want to share perhaps what I call the Steve Harris version of this story. Um, the remix of this story and, you know, bring it really practically to how you as a David can dare to fly even though there are Goliaths around you. Now we know the story, David shows up at the battle and then he sees this Goliath who's shouting and waiting for them to, uh, to go into a battle. And David is wondering why no soldier, it seemed, could go to fight Goliath. Now you need to recognize a bit of environmental context, okay? So for 40 days, Israel and Palestine, or the, the Philistines, had had a, a stalemate for 40 days where they would not attack each other, where each country would bring one man to fight. Now, Goliath was the champion, and for, thir and for 40 days, he'd been coming out there looking for someone who would take him out. Um, Israel had no one at the time who was really willing to risk the sovereignty of the nation in man-to-man uh, -man combat. But it's quite interesting that David shows up. And you know, normally when we read that story, we think that you know David got into the battle and then saw Goliath, picked up his catapult, shot Goliath in the head, killed him, and won the story. But this is the remix, okay? Now let's consider a few environmental factors. Number one, Israel is incredibly hot. Number two, Israel is a mountainous region. It's got mountains, it's got valleys, it's got hills. It's got a lot of rock formation. So David shows up and recognizes, I can't beat Goliath toe to toe. You know, the Bible takes time to describe Goliath. It says he was nine feet tall. He was holding a six foot spear. He had an armor bearer who was holding a shield. Goliath was dressed to the nines. He had armor. He was, he was gagged up as the case may be. Um, and this guy was used to fighting um, you know, man to man, right? Now, here's the interesting thing. I don't believe that David just went there and shot him in the cat with a catapult. David recognizes that his strategy, because, you know, the Bible says that Saul says to David that you can't beat this guy. This guy's been killing people since he was a kid. You're just a kid. So David doesn't have the experience. So experience sometimes is a disadvantage. David doesn't have the experience. But what does David have going for him? Number one, David has got speed going for him. I'll, I'll explain this. Number two, David has got stamina going for him. Now, why do I say he's got stamina? What is David's profession? He's a shepherd. And remember, his job every day was to take sheep like herdsmen, take the sheep from one place to the other every day. David was a herdsman. We don't want to hear that, but David was a herdsman, right? He was taking sheep from one point to the other. Then every other day, he would climb a mountain, climb a valley. And, you know, imagine climbing, imagine climbing a building, right, that has 15 stories, right? And you're not taking the elevator. Every day, you're just walking those stairs. Initially, you're going to feel like you're going to die. But ultimately, what does it do? It increases your lung capacity and then it builds stamina. So David has stamina by having taking sheep every day, climbing mountains every single day. So he's built stamina. Now, if you're going to fight with Goliath, now re remember this, Goliath is nine feet tall, but then he's got a six foot spear. So now they say your wingspan, right? So his wingspan is nine feet, but then he's got a six foot spear. So let's say he's got a 4.5 foot wingspan and then he's got a six foot spear. What, how many feet is that? That's 10 feet. So David recognizes that it makes no sense to get between 10 feet of Goliath. Because if he gets within 10 feet, Goliath can hit him, right? Now, what does David do? Number two, this is my second point. David changes the battle formation to suit him. Now, sometimes what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you know, 
adjust to the environment. No, what you should do is to make the environment work for you. Sometimes we try to fight our enemies the way our enemies are used to fighting. We need to change how our enemies fight us. All right, so what do I mean by that? David recognizes that his strategy is to wear down Goliath. Now, don't forget, David is wearing armor. He's got all this armor. And don't forget, Israel is a very hot place. So David recognizing Goliath is wearing armor, it's hot. If I can get him to sweat, if I can get him to get tired, this is not a fight that is gonna be over in 15 minutes. This is a fight that might take a long time, which is why you must have stamina, which is why you must have capacity. If you're living in Nigeria watching this or in Africa, you definitely have stamina. You know what I'm saying? Everything in Nigeria, everything in Africa sometimes seems to be working against you, right? Um, it builds your stamina, but number two, you must have capacity. Now, why is that important? So now imagine Goliath is trying to expect David to fight him like a, like a real man. But this is what I believe David does. And remember, this is the Steve Harris version. I believe that David gave Goliath as much distance as possible and started stoning him, started stoning Goliath. Goliath is like, am I a dog? Why are you throwing stones at me? Fight me like a man. And he would chase David. David would run. He would throw a spear. David will duck. Goliath will have to go and retrieve the spear. David would throw another stone. And it was like a stoning competition for I don't know how long. Personally, I believe it's a, goal, a long time. The third point, you must make sure you have lots of ammunition. Now, you may not have the equipment that Goliath had. Goliath has a sword, Goliath has a shield, Goliath has armor, David has none of those things. But you know why, why David has a lot of uh, ammunition? Remember what I said, Israel is a hot place. It's a mountain, right? It's a mountainous region. And what does it mean? It means there are lots and lots of stones. David brings the one tool that has unlimited ammunition. For some of you, your unlimited ammunition is social media. For some others, it's your Instagram. For some, it's your, if, it's, if you're like me, it's your good looking face and your very wonderful voice. Whatever your ammunition is, you don't run out of it. There's something you love. There's something you do that when you do it, you just don't run out of it. It just keeps continuing and replenishing. And David has a cat catapult and he's got unlimited stones like bullets all over the place and he's pelting Goliath and stoning him now this is what I believe Goliath is gonna get frustrated fight me like a man this is a fight that Goliath would have ended in two minutes come kill him the end we've won but David is not fighting according to the rules of engagement he is creating his own rules why because he wants to dare to fly now what do you think happens after this continues happening for a while Goliath gets tired now remember David has done what you call a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. He has looked at his competition, which is Goliath, recognizing that this guy is covered from head to toe. He has no visible weak spot, but I want to tell you this, every giant is vulnerable. Every giant is vulnerable. Every giant is vulnerable. The giants of corruption in Nigeria or in Africa, it is vulnerable. FIRS are vulnerable. I don't even know what I'm saying. Every giant that is stopping your progress is vulnerable. Your responsibility is to figure out what is your SWOT analysis. Now, why do I say this? The Bible describes Goliath, he's wearing armor, he's got this, he's got that. But David recognizes that if I can run this battle long enough, because the Bible describes David as a military strategist, scripture says that he never lost a battle. Now, check this out. David recognizes that if I can run this battle for a long time, look, I have stamina, Goliath is hot. If I can get Goliath to take off his helmet, then I will hit him where it hurts. Now remember, the purpose of all this activity was to get Goliath into the place where he could take off his helmet. But I want to quickly tell you something very important. I believe, and remember, this is the Steve Harris version, so stay with me. I believe that there were some shots that David was taking that he would deliberately miss. Now, what do I mean by that? If every, if David took a shot and each shot hit his target, Goliath would be need to say, hmm, to be like, say, this guy, they use me, they play, right? But if David would take some and miss, right, Goliath will be wouldn't feel threatened by the time he had to take off his helmet. Now, what do I mean by this? There are certain shots you are taking that you are going to miss, sweetheart. You will try that business idea, it's gonna, it's gonna suck. You're gonna try this ad, it's gonna suck. You're gonna try this idea, it's gonna suck. You will seem to keep, you will seem to be missing, but don't stop fighting. Can I say this again? You might seem to be missing, your shots may not be hitting, but don't stop throwing, don't stop hitting, don't stop 
being in the battle. Don't go home and quit. You are too close to fail. I know this is Nigeria. This is Africa. Things are testing you, but don't stop hitting. So I believe that as David is taking shots, he's missing some, some deliberately, some not deliberately. Goliath is getting tired. And here's the wonderful thing. Remember, he's hot. The Palestinian son is hot. This David doesn't look like he's going to fight this fight the way it's, it's you know, we're actually con con configured. And what happens? Goliath takes off his helmets. I believe that Goliath took off his helmets. Maybe he wanted to clean his face. I'd be like, oh, this, this fight not die. Or, you know, whatever it was. Maybe he was tired. Maybe the sweat was just too much. Maybe he just needed to relax or cool down. But that was the moment that David was waiting for. Now, how do I know that David was probably missing his shots deliberately? The Bible describes that the men of the tribe of David, like, um, I can't remember his exact tribe, the Bible says that they were able to hit a target from a significant distance using either their right hand or their left hand. Now, what does that mean? It means that they were ambidextrous. Now, what does that mean to you listening to me right now? You must have the ability to use both hands. One hand to hustle, one hand to learn. You've got to be able to use both hands. This is not the time where you're one-handed. This is the time that you've got to be ambidextrous. You've got to learn as you're, as you're, as you're doing, uh, as you're watching people doing the bus sit challenge or silhouette challenge, and they're all sorts of crazy challenges invest in the knowledge challenge this is the thinkation challenge put something in your brain even though people are busting it with their bodies this you need to bust it with your brain you need to b-o-s-s -S it boss it don't boss it boss it with your brain with your mind this is the time to be ambidextrous right and the bible says that they were able to hit a target from a distance with either their left hand or their right hand and the moment david recognizes guys that Goliath is in that place of not taking him seriously. I want to say this to you. Your giants will never take you seriously. No giants will take David seriously because he looks at it and says, I've got the experience, I've got the exposure, I've got the resources, I've got the skill, I've got the money. You are nothing. What you know, you're you're not a threat. It's beautiful when no one considers you a threat. Why? Because in reality, your competition is not the person in front of you, your competition is the person coming behind you. Oh, you don't hear me what I'm saying. Goliath would have thought that his competition would have been a bigger bad a giant, but he never saw David coming. I want to tell you, listen to me right now, no one can see you coming. The fact that you're in the background means God is hiding you because no one can see you coming. Do me a favor. I know I'm not there with you right now, but do me a favor. Just tell the person beside you or drop it in the comments and say, no one can see me coming. You can't see me coming. John Cena, you can't see me. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what happened because we tend to think that our biggest competitors are the guys in front of you. No, my biggest com competitor is not Jimmy Tewa. My biggest competitor is not the wonderful, awesome Ubon King. My biggest competitor is the person who's watching this broadcast right now. Looking at Steve Harrison saying, This guy, I think I'm better than this guy. You, my friend, are my competition. But Dory, like, like Goliath, you're not taking my head off because me, I'm David, I'm Goliath, I'm all of them. You know what I'm saying? Right? But the beautiful thing is, Goliath takes his helmet off, and in that moment, David strikes. Now, what do I mean? David didn't vacillate. He didn't think too much. He didn't analyze para or he didn't get he didn't get caught up in analysis paralysis. He didn't try to get all his ducks in a row. He didn't try to say, "Oh, let me let me let it be perfect. Let me, you know, let, let me procrastinate a little bit." Listen, when the time of your opportunity comes, you must act. It's all about ruthless execution, taking your shots and doing it now and do not miss. Let me say this again. Do not miss. Do me a favor, drop it in the comments. Do not miss which you've got one shot you know if you've ever listened to that Eminem's lose yourself there's a there's there, you know the lyrics are powerful I, I encourage you listen to the lyrics of Eminem's lose yourself you can't afford to miss it if, if, if you've only got one shot will you get it do not miss and you know the interesting thing we hear the story David knocks out Goliath he has no sword picks Goliath's sword kills him but that's not the best part this is the final part that's the best part David kills Goliath and the Bible says he takes the head of Goliath and he puts it in his tent. Now, why is that important? The Bible says that when he kills Goliath, the army of Israel runs to the field, to the battlefront, and they begin to chase the armies of the Philistines to kill them. The Philistines run away. The armies of Israel run towards them and they're chasing. Now, imagine if someone saw the head of Goliath and picked it up from the floor. You know what would happen? That person because he had proof that person will get the reward of the fact that he killed Goliath. What do I mean by this? You can only get ahead if you have the head. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I know this sounds like a spire, but it's a but I know you're going to work with me. Only those who have the head 
will get ahead. Where is the evidence? Don't forget, if you remember in the Bible, previous verses before, previous verses before, Saul asked him, he said, what have you done before? David, David said, I've killed a lion. Saul said, where's the head? He said, I don't have. So I've killed a bear. Where's the head? I don't have. David was not ready to make that mistake again. And when he killed Goliath, the first thing he did was he took his head to the tent so that it would not be said that some other guy killed Goliath because he, whoever has the head will get ahead. My point is now is the time to document all the things you're doing, all the little things. I saw something funny that, you know, you can even put the fact that you are an administrator of a WhatsApp group on your, on, on, on your CV now because you can just simply say, oh, I run, a, I run a program where 200 and something people there and I facilitate is English is packaging. If you don't have proof, you will not get ahead. So listen, guys, those are the things. Adjust the environment, change your battle formation find the right ammunition, execute quickly, and more importantly, get ahead. If you do this, I guarantee that you will eventually fly. And like my brother, the, the phenomenal Ubon King says, the only way to get out of trouble is to get into trouble. So I wish you guys plenty of trouble, even as you get ahead. God bless you.